We got a score for the Mets. That ball is pounded down the line and they'll wave it home. And again, they're on their feet. For the first time ever, there is postseason baseball at City Field in New York. And this place is electrified as we approach game three of the NLDS. The 2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T-Mobile. With the series tied at a game apiece, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers and the New York Mets here on TBS. Well, it is the most talked about moment of the postseason so far. Chase Utley taking out Ruben Tejada. There has been opinion all over the board from fans and players alike. Some say it's good hard baseball. Some say it's the cheap shot heard around the world. Don't know where you stand on that, but we're gonna talk about it once again here at City Field. Good evening, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson along with Cal Ripken Jr and Ron Darling. So we've had about 48 hours to digest this and look at it again and again and again and again. Cal, what's the bottom line for you? Well, I mean, I've had about a thousand times or more trying to break up those double plays. And I've had about a thousand times where people come in and try to break me up in those double plays. But I tell you what, um, in the playoffs, these slides get even harder. Remember back in 1973 where Pete Rose was going into Bud Harrelson. This slide's a hard slide that results in a fight on the field. And then in 1977, you had Hal McRae. He's come, he comes hard into second base right here and takes Willie Randolph out. I don't think I'd call that a slide necessarily. Uh, but when you're thinking about Chase Utley, I'll tell you what he was thinking. I've been there. He's getting a lead off from second base, first base. And he's trying to get down there to break up the double play so they can score the time run in a series where they're down one nothing. I think he's thinking the right thoughts. That slide was a little late, but you're going to see competitive baseball just like that. Ruben Tejada, broken leg. Chase Utley, two-game suspension from Major League Baseball. He appealed immediately. The appeal hasn't been heard yet. He is in uniform. In fact, Don Mattingly thought very much about possibly starting him in this game. He's got good numbers against Matt Harvey, but he will come off the bench if needed. Well, well, Matt, Harvey, Matt Harvey on the mound for the New York Mets. Sorry, Aaron, when you're a man like Matt Harvey and your nickname is the Dark Knight, a game starting now at 8.30 is the perfect time for him to throw a great game. In between all of his headlines, he may be the National League Comeback Player of the Year. He was outstanding. But I think the most important thing, is there going to be retaliation? Of course not. The outs are just too important in the postseason. But if you are the middle infielders for the Los Angeles Dodgers, two words for you. Heads up. Good advice. The series lead is on the line. Dodgers and the Mets here at City Field. First pitch coming right up.
Welcome back to New York. We get set for game three of this National League Division Series between the Mets and the Dodgers and an absolutely perfect night, 63 degrees. And what a series we've had so far. Now reduced to the best two out of three as the series moves from West Coast to East Coast. Tonight's batting order is presented by T-Mobile. Howie Kendrick leads it off for the Dodgers. Jimmy Rollins gets the start at shortstop tonight. Corey Seager, the youngster, not starting in this one. Adrian Gonzalez in the three-hole, then Justin Turner. Andre Ethier bats fifth, followed by Carl Crawford. Yasmani Grandal behind the plate. Kike Hernandez bats eighth in center field. And Brett Anderson does the pitching for the Dodgers. I think sometimes because he's such a large figure off the field, you forget about how good he is on the field. And he was 13 and 8 this year, and that's after missing all of last year after Tommy John surgery. There's a reason why he is pitching the first postseason game in City Field history. Let's take a look at the way the Mets line up defensively, Cal. All right, well, we know Matt Harvey's on the mound. You just heard from Ron Darling. Darno is behind the plate. Going on across the infield, you got David Wright and Lucas Duda on the corners. No Ruben Tejada, unfortunately got hurt. William Flores is a short. Daniel Murphy is playing at second base. And around the outfield, you got Cespedes now in left field. Madaris in uh, center field. And Curtis Granderson over and right. got going on right now Ronnie well I think the umpires they might be giving a warning to oh. start the game and that is a joke no do not do that do not do that that can't be a warning you think I mean this is how you're gonna start the game the postseason game you know, when we were talking to Terry Collins before the game, this is the one thing he said, please, I hope we don't do this. I, I hope they don't decide to start the game that way and take away pitching inside from starting pitchers in this Except game. Except I, I could be wrong in the sense that it's only Mattingly who's yeah. talking to the umpires, yeah. not Collins. So yeah, yeah, maybe Mattingly has a, a, a feeling of security issues for his team in the dugout. Yeah, because I was going to say, are we sure yeah, yeah. that it's a warning thing? It doesn't feel like it, doesn't look like it right now. But there's definitely an issue. Well, Gary Cedarstrom, who's the crew chief, is now calling out Terry Collins of the Mets. What a way to start, though, if you're Matt Harvey on the mound. It doesn't look like a warning. No, you're right. It doesn't feel like it to me. We're so sensitive right now. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want that to happen. We want the game to be played the way it's supposed to be played. I can't guess what it is right now. Well, we have three umpires right now talking to Terry Collins. We got two on the mound. And believe me, folks, we're just... It's anybody's guess is exactly what is being discussed right now. That's the equipment manager, Kevin Kirst, that Terry Collins was just speaking to. So... You wonder what that's all about as he is talking to Gary Cedar Trump. No angry words, some smirks and smiles, so maybe not something too serious. Let's hope it's something technical. <laughs> it always is up here. Huh? <laughs> Replay equipment, something. So, so Ron, you're the starting pitcher. You are wow. amped. The juice is flowing. You're ready to go. And now you're going to throw a few more warm-up pitches. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, just a horrible way to have to start it. But, you know, if the uh, replay is not working or uh, security issue, we don't know what it is. But that's a representative from MLB and... Hopefully we'll get this thing started in the next few minutes. That would be nice. That's more. More issues now as Mattingly comes back on the field. Yeah, I'm wondering if your adrenaline is all firing. First time in the playoffs. 
Oh, you see uh, uh, Greg Gibson. That was pretty cool. He told Harvey, take as many warm-up pitches as you need. Harvey said, I'm ready to go. That is cool. He doesn't look like he's hyperventilating. No, no. Well, Matt Harvey loves the New York Rangers. He's got his postseason hockey beard working. Whatever it was, it's over and done. Howie Kendrick steps in. Matt Harvey into the wind. And there's a strike. Greg Gibson, the home plate umpire. And that's just ceremonial right there. Throwing the first pitch out. First playoff game here. That's right. But what if he likes the ball? I know. I'm not saying the same thing. What if he likes the seams? That was a good four seamer right there. I can see throwing it out if it was a ball. <laughs> no balls and two strikes. As Harvey jumps out ahead of Kendrick. Who's three for eight in the series with an RBI. There was some thought given to uh, Chase Utley playing instead of Howie Kendrick, but Howie Kendrick's been there the whole time. He's their second baseman defensively and offensively, and their most consistent hitter. Especially in the clutch. On the ground and in the hole. Flores across for the first out. So the guy who is stepping in for Ruben Tejada who suffered the broken leg the other night, makes the first play. What did Terry Collins say before the game? I would love the first hitter to hit a ground ball to Wilmer Flores and have him an easy play, and he makes it. I would argue that's not the easiest play. <laughs> Give me a chopper over the mound or something where I got uh, some time. He backhanded it and made a nice play. And if you haven't played in the playoffs, you just prove that it's the same ground ball. It's the same throw. Okay, we got it over with. Let's go. Well, drawing a start for the first time in this series now is Jimmy Rollins. 21-year-old Corey Seager had started the first two games. And Seager had struggled at the plate. Rollins waits on a 1-0, and that's a bullet foul. Count even a ball and a strike. You see the pitch arsenal, Chevy pitch arsenal of Matt Harvey. He is a complete pitcher. Fastball, curveball, slider change. Gets ahead with the slider there. It's a ball and two strikes. Ran it in and missed. Two balls and two strikes. Rollins. Obviously years and years playing for the Phillies and Mets fans know him well his first season with the Dodgers. Check out the change up the curveball. I think he wants to come fastball back in there again. No. First strike out of the night. For the dark night, two down. You know, it was interesting. Two years ago, when he had his great breakout year in 2013, it was hard slider. He has now gone more to a hard curveball. You see that ball coming out of his hand, the good spin, and in the dirt to Rollins. You can see on that slow motion replay the dot that when you spin the ball a little bit like a slider or a slurve, you can see a dot. From the hitter side and also from the pitcher side. That's a tight rotation. Here's Adrian Gonzalez, who came up huge in the seventh inning of game two after that whole Chase Utley episode. He's the one that delivered the big hit to give him the lead and propel them to that game two victory. Such a professional hitter, too. Even after being pitched so tough, 
from the first couple games not giving anything to hit when it came time to drive in a run he found a way. And when I say tough I'm talking 101 miles an hour on the outside edge 92 mile an hour change ups and three two counts. They weren't giving him anything pitched him really really well but he did deliver in the clutch both times when he had a chance to. One two is upstairs count even no game one it was Gonzalez with the. Run, the uh, RBI the only run scored by the Dodgers in that game. And that followed three strikeouts earlier. Same story in game two. Struck out three times and then delivered. 2-2 two -two on the ground to first. Lucas Duda. 1-2-3 go the Dodgers in the first. Tonight's batting order is presented by T-Mobile. Curtis Granderson leads it off for the Mets, followed by David Wright and Daniel Murphy. Owenis Cespedes in the cleanup spot, then Lucas Duda. Travis Darno does the catching. Wilmer Flores is the new shortstop. Juan Lagares in center fielder, and Matt Harvey on the mound as they face Brett Anderson. Well, Brett Anderson is the name in that rotation that you don't know about for the Dodgers, but he was a ground ball specialist this summer and went six and one in his last nine road starts. Working quickly and jumping out ahead, no balls and two strikes. He's got that overhand sinker that doesn't really dominate lefties or righties. Opponents hitting 278 off of him, so a lot of base runners also gets a lot of double plays. Granderson four out of six through the first two games looking at a Dodger shift and fouled off right at the plate. Anderson has made a postseason start before in his career it came as a member of the uh, Oakland A's. And in fact, he 
started an elimination game for the A's and kept them alive against the Tigers in 2012. That pitch sails outside. Six shutout innings in that game. See that big breath by Anderson. He has never faced the New York Mets. With Anderson, it's always been a question of his health, especially in recent years. Really beginning in 2011 when he had Tommy John surgery, and that really cut his 2012 short. Followed away by Granderson. 2013, he had a stress fracture in his right foot, missed about four months. Last year with the Rockies, broke his left index finger and had back surgery. He's 10 and 9 with the Dodgers this year, and he will field that comebacker by Granderson and get him by a step. Ball took a little bit of a funky uh, spin on him, and he was able to barehand it and throw him, throw him out. Fred Anderson throwing the Yasmani Grandal behind the plate. Around the diamond, you got Justin Turner, Jimmy Rollins with his four gold gloves, Howie Kendrick, and Adrian Gonzalez that can match Jimmy Rollins in gold gloves. Move the outfield, Enrique Hernandez in center, Crawford in left, and easier than right. Gold glove guys as well. That defense has been really improved this year. I think Rollins has had a lot to do with that. Here's David Wright. First pitch swinging, and that's out of play. I think in the past, the execution, some of the errors have been uh, have really been clean, cleaned up. Yeah. Best fielding percentage in the in the majors. Fewest errors. Yeah, 75. And neither side has made an error in this series. When you look at the combined line score, 5, 10, and 0. For the Mets, 6 14 and 0 for the Dodgers. Oh, they checked for help down there at first, and Chris Guccione says, Yes, he went. David Wright down on strikes here in the first. Yeah, couldn't hold up. With that old fashioned way to say, did he break his wrist? Yeah, I think he did. Couldn't, couldn't control the barrel of the bat. I don't know if we can say the fielders have been good or bad. Very few balls put in play in the series. <laughs> 25 strikeouts aside. Coming into game three. That was nearly half the outs the Dodgers made in the first two. 25 out of 51 outs. Those 50 strikeouts in the first two games. A major league record for consecutive games of a postseason series. He was part of that. He was a big part of that. You know, early on, the indication of some of these foul balls are smothered, they're topped, they're getting over top. That, that indicates a really good sinker. I didn't know he threw 95. He saw a couple pitches at 95 as well. So he has the ability to reach back with his velocity. 37 and 41 in his career is Brett Anderson. Murphy waiting. And takes a strike. One and two. As I recall, Iron Man, you're fond of calling guys like this who throw hard and throw low in the zone like they're throwing a bowling ball. <laughs> That's usually the right handers that used to bore in on me. The left handers, there's been a lot of them that have this nasty sinkers with velocity now. So, so the Mets left handed hitters who performed pretty well against Clayton Kershaw in the first game are getting a totally different look. Instead of cutters and fastballs and curveballs away, it's sinker, sinking fastballs that are in on their hands. The one two missed outside, and the count even. Murphy's two out of eight in the series has homered. One of three the Mets have hit. The Dodgers, who led the National League in home runs, have yet to go deep. There's a blooper into left center field. And Kike Hernandez almost overran that thing. That's the third out. We are scoreless as we head to the second.
Official caps, hoodies, jackets, and more. Celebrate with your favorite team at the MLB.com shop. We head to the top half of the second inning here at City Field. Four, five, and six hitters do for the Dodgers. And Justin Turner, the former Met, takes a ball from Matt Harvey. Harvey number six in the National League, an opponent batting average. He held opponents to 222 with the plate. Well, Turner has been an incredible hitter so far in this postseason against his old mates. Four for eight. Looks like they're careful with him with the fastball. He's also hit a couple breaking balls and he's hit some two strike fastballs. Driven into the gaps. One ball, two strikes. Tried to paint the corner and missed in the count even. Talk about painting the corner. That was a nice shot of Travis Darno's orange little nail polish on that pinky. Hard to miss. <laughs> Up the middle, base hit. Pass to diving Daniel Murphy. All right, Sam Ryan, we want answers. We want answers. What happened here at the beginning of the game? I, I have some answers for you, Ernie. The problem was with replay, indeed, on the Dodgers side. The replay phone from the dugout to the clubhouse was not functioning properly. It's all fixed now, MLB officials tell me. So replay phones on both sides. The Dodgers and the Mets are up and running. Everything's good now, guys. That is good to hear. <laughs> well, and we're glad that was the reason. Well, it's good to hear, but I also apologize to the umpire. Um, I said it would be a joke for they started this in a warning. They did not. Uh, the joke was my premature assumption. If you're fooled on that first one, it's 0 1. So, just for fun, how would they have started the game if they're going to issue the warning? I think they would have done it at the man manager's meetings. Okay. Yeah. We wouldn't have done it. We wouldn't have waited on the field. Yeah. Because we were all worried about that in the production meeting today. I I'm over goosed over here. I'm just seeing excited. <laughs> <laughs> Line drive, a looper into left center field and back to back hits to open up the second here for the Dodgers. This looks like a tailing fastball that goes off the end of the bat. Ethier gets just enough on it to carry it out in left center field. Ether and Ethier and Turner have taken some good at bats in this series. Carl Crawford steps in and Crawford 0 for 7 in the series with a couple of strikeouts. You would think this could be a sacrifice or a controlled bunt for a hit. Right here to move the runners up, put a little pressure on the defense. Wright is expecting it. He squares and bunts it back to the screen 0 and 1. Well, we saw this in the wild card game. The issue with Carl Crawford. If he's bunting, you've got to take it away if you're the third baseman because he has such tremendous speed. Yeah, the play here at third base is you might have to cover third if the ball's bunted uh, and the pitcher can get over there and cover that, but you don't want to have any indecision on the ball down the line. If the ball down the line, there can be no such thing as a perfect bunt in that situation. Slapped in the left field base hit. They'll hold up Turner at third. They are loaded with nobody out here in the second. This is just a good piece of hitting. Bring him in a little bit on the butt and then slap it right past him in that hole between short and third. Big time scoring opportunity here in the second for the Dodgers against Matt Harvey. As Monty Grandal steps in. Look at that number. 0 for his last 22. What an opportunity for Yasmani. 
Overall, he's four for his last 88, including this series. And he takes a strike 0 and 1. He's 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts here in the NLDS. Turner, Ethier, and Crawford, your runners. Nobody out. Well hit, base hit into right. That's going to score a run. That's going to score two, and the throw comes into third, and it's wide. And here comes Carl Crawford, and he's going to score. Grandal delivers. The Mets help out defensively, and three runs score. Ball hit right, right out of the grass. And I'm amazing that Ethier got such a good jump on second base to come in and score. Sets up a throw to third base. Granderson throws wide. Right can't handle it. And another run scores. What you have to do if you're Matt Harvey there, you hustle behind the plate. Once you realize the right fielder is not going to throw home, you got to hustle behind the third baseman. It's almost like you go halfway between third and home. So Grandal at second. And here's Kike Hernandez. Three runs are in here in the top half of the second. Talk about a crowd quieter. It's a two RBI single for Grandal. Randerson charged with an error, which is the first of this series for either side. That's in the air to shallow center. And Lagaris puts it away for the first out. So you had a hitter as you see this base hit again that gets past Luda. Watch Harvey. Harvey's got to go where the NLDS is here. Once he realized Granderson's not going to make the play at home, he hustles behind right just in case the ball gets by him. And he might have had a chance to stop that third run from coming in. He had a great look at Ethier right there. Ethier took a chance and went. That ball was barely miss being caught if that's caught it turns a bases loaded no out situations into a double play that's the worst thing that happened got a little break or maybe you could read it that good here's the pitcher Brett Anderson that normally in the situation where you're going to be aggressive you're going to be conservative and, and go one base at a time but the good read caused two runs to be scored and maybe assisted in the third Balls and two strikes. Anderson hits like a pitcher. He's only four for 47. But in the National League, this is what you do. Runner on second and one out, you let your pitcher hit. Maybe he'll get lucky. Goes down swinging. Second strikeout for Harvey. And we go back to the top of the Dodger order and Howie Kendrick. Cal, I always say this. When you start a postseason game, the first inning, your adrenaline takes you through. But when you go out there for that second inning, it's almost like the air has been let out of the balloon. I mean, you feel like you don't have any energy and you kind of kind of get through it. Harvey has not been able to do that. Kendrick grounded out his first time. Swings and misses 0-1. I think the hitting equivalent of that is that you're uh, you're all um, you're all hyped up before in batting practice. You're running your sprints really hard. You're trying to get ready. And then you come to the plate and you feel like, man, I have no energy. <laughs> Tried to hold up, couldn't. Going two. That's a good sharp breaking ball. Kendrick 54 runs batted in in the regular season one here in the postseason and a line drive into the glove of David Wright at third 
but the Dodgers have themselves an inning. Four straight hits, played three runs. Could have been more, but right flagged it down. Dodgers jumping out with three in the second as Brett Anderson goes back to work facing Yoenna Cespedes. Takes a strike 0 and 1. Anderson, the left handed ground ball specialist. Tough play, but Rollins made it on the hop. And Cespedes is beat it. I was wondering about the spacing on the shift. Ball just takes him back. He takes a little too much time. You can't do that with Cespedes. He's a big, strong guy, but he's fast to first base. You know what happens during the middle of the year is that Cespedes who plays 160 plus games. He won't really run flat out on a ground ball like that. But in the postseason of course he is. And you saw his speed right there. So the leadoff man on here in the bottom half of the second inning as the Mets try to do something about a three nothing deficit. Here's Lucas Duda. 27 home runs in the regular season. Took left handers deep seven times. And the left hander Anderson throws the breaking pitch over for a strike. From up here, you look at uh, high home, you say, why wouldn't he just bunt it? You know, to straightaway third or straightaway short. Seems like it's being given to you. Anderson has good stuff right now. Beginning for the Mets to try to put a run or two up on the board. Get right back in this game immediately. Shut down ERA for Anderson this season. 1.29. Excellent. 
His teammates gave him a three run second inning to work with. Mattingly had some interesting points about uh, the offense against the shift. Sometimes the responsibilities are different. You had different people turning double plays, like third baseman, and even the bunting of that. It's not your normal soft bunt. If you're going to bunt that side of the infield, you need to punch it. And you just don't work on that enough to try to get it. I, I would suspect if the shifts continue, you're going to start to see more and more people that try to adopt that skill. You see Rollins and Kendrick in their normal spots. It's just in turn to the third baseman who's playing in the hole on the right side. In the air to right. That ball's going to fall for a hit. They are at first and second. Here in the bottom half of the second. We saw the Dodgers with four straight hits. The Mets with two in a row to start the frame. This is a really interesting. I don't know if you'll be able to see it this first time. The base hit to right field because of the shift. Somebody's got to cover third. Base hit to right field with the potential first to third. And Rollins was scrambling back over to third to get there. That's some of the things that Mattingly was talking about um, that the shift does produce. And you got to remember what your role is. Rollins is a shortstop, but he's not supposed to cover second anymore. He needs to get back to third. Here's Travis Gardo to left center field. That ball's going to get down for a base hit. That's going to get the Mets on the board. It is three to one. A nice response to that three spot you put up. They're trying to get right back in the game right away. Darno needed it too. 0 for 7 in the series, but he connects there. Remember, this entire inning started with Jimmy Rollins taking for granted the speed of Uranus Cespedes. I think the hard part of that play was catching it, and then he took a deep breath and didn't realize that uh, Cespedes was getting it down the line. There's Wilmer Flores, the starting shortstop. Flores made 96 starts at short. He's starting tonight because Ruben Tejada had the broken leg in the Chase Utley run in the other night. Had strep throat in late September. Could not eat anything. Lost 10 pounds during that illness. And among Mets fans, best known for that episode earlier this season. Right near the trade deadline. Looked like he was going to be traded to the Milwaukee Brewers, part of a Carlos Gomez deal. He got word of it while on the field and had to wipe away tears. He's been with the organization since he was 16. Turns out that trade did not go through. A couple nights later, he hits a walk-off home run. Back over the mound. Kendrick, no play. Infield hit. They're loaded with nobody out. Well, there's two balls in this inning that go down not as errors. They go down as hits. But there are two plays that could be made. Rollins especially. This is a tough play right here. Coming across the mound. You got to catch and release. Just can't find the ball on the transfer. So the Dodgers with four straight hits in the top half of the second inning. The Mets have done the same thing here in the bottom half. And here's Juan Lagares with the bases loaded. Mets are being really aggressive in this inning of Brett Anderson. This is the same situation. Bases loaded, no outs. 
You're the, you're the base runners. You want to be a little conservative. You don't want to have a line, have a line drive hit at any one of the infielders that can turn into a double play. So make sure you're confident, conscious of who's close to the bag. Missed outside. Count even a ball and a strike. Lagares, who had started in center field against lefties in August and September, left out of that starting lineup in the first game of the series. Michael Kadir played in that first game. Now back in there here against Anderson. Only one at bat in the series. He's 0 for 1. First playoff game ever here at City Field. The last one at Shea Stadium, Mets fans want to forget. Came in 2006 in the NLCS in Game 7. On the ground to first. Gonzalez to the plate for the out. One down, bases still loaded. Adrian Gonzalez can really handle the glove over there at first and make this look easy. A really nice play because he's throwing like some of the other infielders around the diamond on the run. Knew that he had a little time and a force out at home plate. Makes a nice play. Well, Matt Harvey, you put yourself into this fine mess. Can you extract yourself from it? He bats with the bases loaded and one out. And takes a strike 0 and 1. That game seven back in 06 against the St. Louis Cardinals. And a bitter end as Wainwright struck out Beltron. Looking at a curveball with the bases loaded. Cardinals beat him 3 1 to go to the World Series. Swing and a miss by Harvey 0 and 2. Harvey, like most of the Mets pitchers, as you see, the runners on on base. 28 RBIs from the Mets from their pitching staff. That led the National League. Harvey had a home run and seven RBIs himself. He did not go, says Chris Guccione. In fact, at one stretch, he had three straight games in which he had knocked in two runs in each. There's a man on every bag. And Harvey goes down swinging for out number two. Nice pitching there by Brett Anderson. Treated Harvey like a hitter, just kept staying with that good hard slider. You see that release, just tries to back foot it, and he does. Back to the top of the Mets order now in Curtis Granderson who hit a little number back to the mound his first time. In the air pretty well hit the center field and that ball is off the wall. It's going to clear the bases. Curtis Granderson delivers a bases clearing double. After giving up three, the Mets answer with four, and they're not done yet. The first pitch fastball, Curtis. Doesn't often swing at the first pitch fastball. Went up there looking for it. A high sinker. It's a rocket off the wall. Scores all three. Granderson the money side. Granderson now six for his last nine with a homer against Anderson. And boy, was that a big spot. Bases loaded, two out. And he rifles one off the wall.
Here's David Wright. Before this inning, the Dodgers had 25 at bats with runners in scoring position. The Mets had four at bats with runners in scoring position. Trying to change that stat in one inning. One ball, no strikes. Hits sharply to short. Rollins gloves and throws him out. But the New York Mets have themselves in it. Four runs cross. They lead it by one. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Top half of the third here at City Field, and Jimmy Rollins takes a strike. So both sides, three up, three down, quietly in the first. Both teams going nuts in the second. It's a 4 3 game, and then. Decibel level here at City Field has gone from off the charts to non existent, and then <laughs> the bottom half of the second inning. Man, were they raising the roof here? They asked for help down at third, and Chad Fairchild said no swing. So it's two and one to Jimmy Rollins. Matt Harvey into the line. Count even two balls and two strikes. Uh, Ronnie, you're around this team a yeah. lot. I mean, you've seen firsthand all the drama surrounding this guy, Matt Harvey. And as he strikes out Rollins for the first out. Well, coming back from Tommy John, John surgery and his agent Scott Boris concerned about the workload and saying that Dr. James Andrews said it was a, a, a cap of 180 innings. Sandy Alderson, the Mets GM, said that's not exactly the same thing I'm hearing from Dr. Yeah. Andrews. I mean, 
What was, from your seat, what was it like during this whole thing? Well, I think it almost made it unfair for Harvey. Put him in such a position that I don't think any agent wants to put his athlete under. I think the issue was, is early in the season, the Mets had tried to do all they could. Six-man rotations. All of the pitchers in the rotation had 10 to 15 days off during the year. They sat them down trying to keep those innings down. The difficult part is you're trying to have a championship season. And these are the reason these guys were the reason that you had a chance for one. Remember, this team early on couldn't score a run. So the only way they stayed in this race is because night in and night out they had good young starting pitching. They had to use it. 1 1 foul back a ball and two strikes. And you've seen already in the first two games of this series the examples of those fine young arms and Jacob DeGrom and Noah Syndergaard. Matt Harvey going 13 and 8. ERA of 271 in his 29 starts and 189 and a third. The innings worked. Just the, the, one of the most difficult things in the game today is to try to take care of your starting pitchers. Comes a fastball inside. And he missed with it. Count four, three and two. You know, you can make the argument, guys, that unless you're a Hall of Fame pitcher, you've got a six year window. You might want to use them all up during those six years if you're the ball club. Very few pitchers make it to 10, 12, 13 years. Three balls, two strikes, here it comes. Ball four, and Gonzalez draws a one out walk. Let's take a look at StatCast powered by Amazon Web Services at the bases clearing double by Curtis Granderson. That was a laser, got out there at 102 miles an hour off the bat. He had a chance to go hit the top of the wall. We said early on his last 72 at bats of the regular season. He did not swing at the first pitch at any time. And now he's become a first pitch swinger in the series. <laughs> he's living by the ambush. <laughs> That's a big at bat for him and especially on the heels of what had happened defensively. He was charged with an error in that three run Dodger second. Justin Turner swinging a hot bat. It's interesting, all five of his hits in this series have come with two strikes. It was Turner who got things started in the second. When the Dodgers had four straight hits to open the inning. They would score three times. Three balls and no strikes. That wasn't close. Well, these are the issues you have with your young pitchers when you decide to rest them. Give them extra time. Just pitching on nine days rest in this start. Sometimes hard to keep your control. His last start was October 3rd on the losing end of that Max Scherzer no hitter. Swinging 3 and 0 oh, and fouls it out of play. Wasn't surprised that he was swinging 3 0. -oh. You're going to get a fastball center cut. It's still going to be hard, but that might be your best opportunity to get one on the center of the plate and put it and drive it. Gonzalez is the runner at first. Turner waiting on a 3 1. A bullet into left field base hit. Gonzalez will round second. He's going to stay right there. Two runners on with one out here in the third. Boy, I, don't, I don't know why Gonzalez, Gonzalez didn't challenge Cespedes. <laughs> no, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but Turner continues to torment the Mets. His sixth hit, five of them have come with two strikes. That one ahead in the count. Dan Worthen, the Mets pitching coach, is on the mound. He's got some Dodger ties. He was their bullpen coach for a couple of seasons. 
been a pitching coach for the Tigers and the Padres in Seattle. Pitch for the Expos, pitch for the Phillies, pitch for Houston. And he has a word with Matt Harvey. Trying to work out of some trouble here in the top half of the third. You see Jonathan Nice up in the bullpen. What did Joe Madden tell us once in the postseason? You have very little tolerance for your starting pitchers. And both starting pitchers during the season are up in the bullpen. Bartolo Colon, the right-hander, left-hander, Jonathan Nice. Of course, I was joking about Gonzalez trying to challenge Cespedes' arm. But it's not just the third base coach that needs to know the arms of the outfielders. You need to take a look so you know instantly whether you're going to be sent or you're going to be held up. Look around, remind yourself who's out there, and help make your own judgment as a base runner. Andre Ethier singled and scored in the second. Gonzalez at second, Turner at first. Real example this last couple of innings that it doesn't matter how hard you throw, how good your stuff is, if you work behind in the count to hitters, you put yourself in harm's way. Yeah, he doesn't look sharp. Sharp with his control, missing with his fastball. This will be pitch number 52. One and two. Ethier thought it was down. But Harvey got the call. He might have thought it was inside a little bit too. Waiting on deck. One ball, two strikes. Inside. Count even two and two. Terry Collins was talking about his philosophy hitting against the likes of Greinke the other day. They don't swing at balls just in. The Dodgers coach the game the same way. Two balls, two strikes to count. Andre Ethier goes down swinging against Matt Harvey with two on. And now two out here in the third. Just joining us, having watched the Chicago Cubs beat the St. Louis Cardinals to take a two games to one lead. This is game three of the NLDS between the Dodgers and the Mets. Dodgers scored three in the second. Mets answered with four of their own. And here we are in the top half of the third. Carl Crawford swings and misses 0 and 1. Four strikeouts for Harvey. The 0-1 to Crawford. Following straight back. And they're on their feet here at City Field. With an 0 2. Up and away. Fastball at 96 from the Mets right hander. 25 pitches now for Harvey in this inning. Every 
pitch fouled off. The pitch count continues to rise. This will be pitch number 60 as we play in the third. Two balls and two strikes. It's a lonely feeling that happens on the mound when you're in these situations. You know you don't have your good stuff. You're trying to find one pitch, whether it's a fastball, curveball, changeup, whatever. One pitch where you snap it off just right, or it leaves your hand just right where you think, I'm back. Hasn't happened yet for Hardy. Gotta be careful here. Crawford, his power comes from the off speed pitches with two strikes. And he waves at that one to end the inning. Dodgers put a couple of guys on but can't move them. We head to the bottom half of the third. Eight. A couple of game fives in the American League on Wednesday. Daniel Murphy takes a breaking pitch over for strike one. But Anderson's got to find that little late sink again. He got quite a few balls squared up. Calaces on count. That's the problem. <laughs> that makes the sinker sink a little bit more. <laughs> so you can see what that Anderson's trying to do. He's going to roll over a curveball to try to get ahead of you, and then he's going to sink her in, slide her away to the left handed hitter. The 2 1. Fooled him 2 and 2. 
toughest guy in baseball to strike out. Daniel Murphy. Stays alive. Jimmy Garcia loosening up in the Dodger pen. This is not one of those mid May starts where you can kind of work your way out of it. If you don't have it, you're gone. Boy, a profound sense of urgency uh, come October. I mean, this is the tooth and nail game, isn't it, Cal? Third game of a five game series, you tied 1 1. Gotta have it. Whatever it takes. The 2 2 to Murphy. On the ground to first. Gonzalez is pretty automatic over there, folks. One down. Well, if you're just joining us, Yasmani Grandal coming up huge in the second inning with the help of a, an error by Curtis Granderson. As three runs scored, and then Granderson with the bases loaded clears them off the wall in right center field. So Curtis almost said, okay, that error that might have cost one run. How about let me get three back on this swing? Well, the Mets answered with four in the second, and that's where we stand. Four three. Bottom three. Cespin has singled his first time and came around to score. The left center field, that's going to get down for a base hit. So Cespedes, who was one for seven in the first two games, is two for two here in game three. And this is after a year where he really struggled against left-handed pitching. But a hustle single, and now a ball not hit squarely, but so strong, dumped into left center. We haven't seen a lot of hits in this series. Tonight the bats are coming alive. Lucas Duda singled his first time. Got to wonder about the length of this leash that Don Mattingly has for his starter, Brett Anderson. A right handed hitter, Travis Garneau, in the on deck circle. If you're a starting pitcher in this kind of game, you don't start getting some outs, manager's going to come out and hurt your feelings. Strikes. Tim Tuffle, the Mets third base coach. Anderson working to Duda. It's interesting. There's two factions of hitters. Guys who like to swing 3 0 and guys who do not like to swing 3 0. Lucas is in the second camp. And misses at the 3 1 and the count full. That's a reason why you might want to swing at the 3 0. Because <laughs> yeah. they'll drop a 3 1 breaking ball back on you again. Cespedes edging away at first. Payoff pitch. Strike three call. 
Brett Anderson battles back from 3 0 and gets due to looking. Boy, that was outstanding pitching. Almost everything away, and he decided to come in and challenge Duda on the inside corner. And how many times does that happen? I mean, I know it happened to me a ton. You let the pitcher back into the bat by taking the fastball, and then he throws a breaking ball to you. Now you don't know what you're going to get. And he throws a perfect fastball on the inside corner. You got to walk back, having been up 3-0. Here's Darno. Hit well to left. Back toward that wall. Crawford goes back. It's gone. Travis Darno with a two-run homer. The kid who grew up in Los Angeles watching the Dodgers, admiring Mike Piazza, just delivered a two run shot. Gets out of here pretty quickly. The aggressive fashion tonight. Coming up, seeing two pitches, two swings. The Dodgers led the National League in home runs, but it's the Mets who have hit all the long balls here in this LDS. Wilmer Flores takes a strike on the corner. Line drive into the glove of Gonzalez at first. But two more runs for the New York Mets. With one swing, Travis Dardo. 6 3.
her phone with team stream by Bleacher Report. Get the latest MLB news, scores, and highlights all in the palm of your hand. Download team stream on the App Store or Google Play today. Top four, his money Grandal leads it off against Matt Harvey. It was Grandal. He came up with the big hit in the second inning with the bases loaded. Knocked in a couple of runs and then Carl Crawford would come around to score on the throwing error by Curtis Granderson. Good sequence right here to start off with. Fastball inside corner change up and then back inside again. Little cutter though that he's throwing down and in. He's not getting the left handers to bite at it. Going to paint a fastball inside. Up in his eyes, three and two. Two thousand ten first year player draft. That's when the Mets landed Matt Harvey. That's in the air to right. And that'll be routine for Granderson. One down. Moments ago, Sam Ryan spoke with Mets manager Terry Collins. Terry, I know you said before the game, Travis spent some time with Kevin Long. How encouraging is what you're seeing tonight? Well, it's very encouraging. He, he, he's a big bat in our lineup. We, you know, we've got to get him swinging a bat. You know, for us to be successful, Sam, we got to go throughout the order. We don't have one or two guys that are going to carry us. For Matt, he's over 60 pitches now already. How concerned are you? Yeah, I'm pretty concerned because that's not how he usually goes. He's usually, a, uh, especially this year, he's been a pitch to contact guy where he's gotten deeper in the games. But you know what? He's got to give us a couple more good innings and, and hopefully we can run some more runs up there. And, and if we got to take him out, we'll do that then. What's his limit tonight? Oh, about 115 tops. Thanks, Terry. Yeah. Well, 115 tops is Terry Collins. Going to the outside limit on what Harvey will be able to do tonight. P.K. Hernandez in the hole. That's a nice play by Flores for the second out. Well, the Dodgers going to go to the bench. Brett Anderson's night is through, and it will be Jock Peterson. He's talking about. Matt Harvey and the Mets drafting him. The Angels drafted him out of high school, but turned that down and went to North Carolina instead. And here's the left hander with the uh, distinctive delivery, the former Brave, Alex Wood. Bulldog, isn't he? He is, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Jack Peterson two for five in his career against Matt Harvey and does have a home run. Peterson started in center field in the opener. Through an intentional walk. And in that game. And he takes a strike. You don't usually see that protective pad placed right there, Cal. No, it's usually down in the <laughs> shin, sometimes over the instep. So he must have took a bad one right below the knee. I'll tell you what, I, I bet Mark Teixeira wishes he had one up there. That's right. It's all. What knocked him out for the rest of the season because he wears that one down around his ankle, but took one off the shin higher up. Three and one. And Peterson draws a two out walk. Cal, it's one of the common things we've seen from the Mets young pitchers in the series, isn't it? Three two, a three one, we've seen a lot of change ups. A lot of breaking balls. Two seamer at 95. Really close. We'll call the ball. 
But you're right, there, the is, there is the art of pitching for sure and dropping different pitches in different counts means you have better control. But when you do have guys that throw 97 98 101. And you have guys that uh, might not have power at home plate. You don't want to risk throwing your second or your third pitch when you have that. Leadoff man Howie Kendrick at the plate for the third time in four innings now. But I don't want to tell Adrian Gonzalez that right now. Because they were dropping the, those sort of change-ups 3-2 on him. Boy, more firm fastballs and not a lot of change-ups. You should see more breaking pitches from Harvey. Chevrolet pitch tracks giving us the rundown on the Mets right-hander. Who's ahead? No balls and two strikes. And he strikes out Kendrick to end the LA four. We head to the bottom half. New York Mets on top by three. Follow every pitch of the postseason with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Stay connected with highlights, replay reviews, scores, pitch tracking, live radio broadcasts, and much, much more. Download the at bat app today. Good look at Alex Wood, the second Dodger pitcher. I thought they might go with the right hander. Flip the, uh, the lineup around a little bit, sticking with the lefty. Does have that weird delivery, it kind of messes with a hitter. Definitely uh, distinctive on a 6'4, 215 pounder. And Juan Lagaris takes a strike, one and one. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get used to when you see the arms and legs come flying and he kind of whips the ball in there. In the air to right center field. Hernandez goes back. He won't get there. One hop off the wall and he's going to hold up at second. We 
We've seen T.K. Hernandez number a couple of times tonight, trying to chase down balls in the outfield, and that one out of his reach again. He has been playing a little bit shallow out there. This is a fastball down the way. Does a nice job of driving it out there. T.K. tries to get to it. This might be catchable if he plays a little bit deeper. T.K. is one of those players that can play a lot of positions, but he is not a true center fielder. He doesn't have that great burst of speed to try to run those kind of balls down. And plus, remember, Alex Wood played for the Atlanta Braves. He's faced the Mets many, many times. They've seen his number. Wood started the season with Atlanta, part of a three-team trade involving Miami, the Dodgers, and the Braves. Which he wound up in the Dodger uniform. Everybody in the ballpark knows what Matt Harvey wants to do. That pitch off the mark. 1 0. Well, it's not a bunt play right here. The way they're set up, Justin Turner has to be the one that comes back to third on a bunt. Rollins faked over as if he was going to charge over there and leave the middle of the diamond open and cover third. Harvey's had trouble all year long. He only has one sacrifice bunt. Well, that went off at the plate. A ball and a strike. So if you take a peek in your bunt, the place to bunt the ball is the third base yes. here. Force Justin Turner to, uh, Turner to come in and field the ball. See how he just jabs that? You don't need to jab the bat. If you're gonna, if you want to bunt the ball to third, point the top of the bat right at the second baseman, Howie Kendrick. That'll give you the angle you need for the ball to get to the third baseman. Doesn't matter where you are. It's, no one likes that move. No, <laughs> no matter what country, no matter what inning, you do that. And you're going to hear folks yell, balk, <laughs> and they'll boo. Harvey already squaring. Follows that back. I'd like for them to outlaw that, the inside move. They yeah. stop the fake to third, throw to first as a balk. Well, I thought you wanted them to outlaw pitchers being unable to lay down <laughs> sacrifice bunts. That's second. <laughs> but that inside move uh, is really deceptive. It's designed to be that way. They throw back. It's pretty close. The way you deter someone from trying to steal third base is by putting your pickoff plays on, not just bluffing, making them realize that we have that play. Harvey gets in a good position to bunt, but watch how far he goes up the bat. He doesn't give himself a lot of bat to be able to bunt the ball once he moves that right hand up. The label. Strike three called. As Harvey brought the bat back. But Greg Gibson called him out on strikes. And he really wanted to be able to get this down. See how far his hand is? That leaves you, boy, less than a foot of bat to try to get that bunt down. Just a backdoor perfect slider from Wood. Well, normally you put your thumb where the label is. And you want to keep it behind. You don't want to wrap your hand around the bat where the, the ball can hit you. Back to the top of the Mets batting order and Curtis Granderson. Sails outside 1 0. So now you got me watching to see how hitter she is on the first pitch. <laughs> Looked like he was ready for the fastball, took the breaking ball. Granderson a ringing double off the wall as last time. Scored three. Alex Wood untied laces on that glove. Don't they teach him how to tie the laces in Georgia? Oh, come on now. It's like two shots in an <laughs> inning and a half. My alma mater. Inside somehow missed him. Randy might be rubbing the same thing.
Mets fans don't want any pitchers close to their hitters or any of their middle infielders to be have a slide into them. Two balls, no strikes. Wood to Granderson. Curtis is uh, swinging the ball, swinging the bat well, seeing the ball very well. Wish he had that one back. In the first two games of the series, was four for six, had not knocked in a run, but that all changed tonight in his second at bat. Can't say enough about Curtis Granderson, what he's done to change his career. When he first came over here, he was supposed to protect right, hit a lot of homers. They put him in the leadoff spot, and he's gone from two years ago, chase percentage around 30%. Now it's around 20%. He's reinvented himself as a hitter. Lagaris, who doubled, has a lead at second. Granderson on the ground to third. Turner checks and throws over for the out. Shifts, Cal, end up two people trying to cover a base that don't play the position. You got Rollins and the pitcher coming over to cover. Lagaris is, what am I supposed to do? No one's holding me close. Different responsibilities for different positions when you shift. So they're sensitized. I don't know how Rollins is going to get there from the other side of second base. Clearly they're sensitized to get over there to cover. Sometimes you think about it, the catcher might be the closest in, out of that shift. He's 90 feet away. Rollins is a little, a little further than that, probably 30 feet further. David Wright steps in and then time is called. In the early days of the shifts, people would cover the third baseman then playing uh, over at shortstop would cover on a steal and then forget that uh, the runner would get up and, and take third. They are going to put David right on with first base open and pitch to Daniel Murphy the left hand hitting second baseman. Donnie Magley said it early in this series. It's one of the reasons he took Kershaw out after Kershaw had walked three in the first game of that seventh inning. He said David Wright just kills lefties. Here comes Rick Honeycutt, the Dodgers' longtime pitching coach. This is called the six runs and three, two, three and two thirds diet. Now you just keep going from the dugout out to the mound. Cuts been the Dodgers pitching coach for 10 years. 21 year career in the major leagues. And some words for Alex Wood as he prepares to face Daniel Murphy. Two on and two out. In the Mets half of the fourth, they lead it 6 3. There's Lagaris who doubled. To lead off the inning. I'm wondering about the matchup. Murphy's five for eleven off of Wood. Murphy 0 for two tonight. Fly to center. Rounded to Gonzalez at first. Way upstairs. One and one.
Red Anderson got the start for the Dodgers, went three. They roughed him up in the second and third. Alex Wood trying to get out of this unscathed. There's a strike. One and two. Murphy's one of those hitters that just loves to have the back and forth with the umpire. Almost every pitch. Lagaris and right the base runners. That's up two and two. Last guy Alex Wood wants to see is Cespedes coming to the plate this inning. He wants to try to get Murphy and snuff out this potential rally. In the left field, that's a base hit. Here comes Lagares. He can drop home with the seventh New York run. Trying to get out of it. Murphy stays on it, fights a fastball off the left field. Well, Mattingly thought he was fighting the lesser of two evils, walking David Wright to face a man that's now six for 12 off him. That's a big enough sample side that says he's seeing the ball pretty well. Seven runs for the Mets, six scoring with two out. And here's Cespedes. You look around at all the postseason games today. I guess it's run scoring day to day. Toronto battling back now to force a game five in their place. Kansas City Royals a stirring comeback to force a game five against the Houston Astros. We were having a little bit of deja vu as we watched that as we were at the ballpark thinking back to the wild card game a year ago four run deficit in the eighth inning for Kansas City. They were home that night. But that's the game that Jump started their entire postseason as they came back to win an extra innings and today kept their season alive with a win in Houston. Took a little too much time for Cespedes. We always talk about pitchers' tempo. Hitters have tempo too. They don't want to wait in that box too long. No, you don't want to stand there and try to focus and start to stare. Stare starts to make it look blurry to you. Blink your eyes, get out of there, start again. Two balls, no strikes. Yeah, cut. <laughs> There's some evil intentions with that pack. But you've seen it since he came over here to the New York Mets. We were talking about 3 0 hacks. Uh, if you ever see a, a hitter. Call timeout like he's getting quick pitch on 3 0. You know he's swinging. <laughs> Runners lead from first and second. Cespedes up there waving that bat and now wants time. A little indecision, a lot of pitches that he's shaken off. Don't know the sequence or the indicator they're using back, back there, but. Taking a lot of time to choose the pitch. The 2 1. In the air to right. And that is a foul ball. It better have been because that's what it's never left the box.
or Wood pitching Cespedes away. Dodgers giving him all of right center field. Cespedes two out of two with a couple of runs scored. And that ball is absolutely scorched to left. Three run shot. And the Mets have blown it open. Something, but you couldn't hear it anywhere. <laughs> what do you think Cespedes felt when he got traded to the Mets? He said, That's where I won the home run derby. I like that ballpark. Cannot wait for the stat cast numbers on that shot. You can almost sense it the way he swung the bat in the first two at bats. Yeah. He felt it was coming. Crowd here tired of cheering for 10 runs and now turning their attention to Chase Utley. In this town, it's usually Pot Fan, Dennis Pot Fan. Straight three to Lucas Duda. I don't know if anybody here saw it. Joanna Cespedes. Oh my goodness.
Jimmy Rollins leading it off in the Dodger half of the fifth. That's in the air behind first. Murphy calls and squeezes for the first out. I told you we'd get the stat cast action <laughs> over here from uh, Amazon Web Services. Just under 111 miles an hour on the exit velocity. 431 for the distance. Got out of here quick. No Mets fan who has tickets in that section ever expects a baseball. <laughs> Adrian Gonzalez is grounded out and walked. Eighty two pitches. From Harvey, there's number 83, bounced past Ron Renicky, the Dodger third base coach who was uh, fired by the Milwaukee Brewers earlier this season. Landed on the coaching staff of Don Mattingly, replacing Lorenzo Bundy in the third base coach's box. That's good stuff. That doesn't, doesn't appear to be sharp. He's, yeah, he's not. He, he usually has impeccable control. Close pitch, but that's off the corners. Payoff pitch on the way. Harvey to Gonzalez. Up the middle base hit. That is a professional hitter right there, mm -hmm. boys and girls. It is Chevy Truck Month. Time to make a strong decision like choosing a Chevy Silverado. Chevrolet is proud to be the official vehicle of Major League Baseball. Here's Justin Turner with a man on and one down. Top half of the fifth. 10 runs, 10 hits, one error for the Mets, 3 6 0 oh for the Dodgers. Mets had 10 hits in the first two games combined. <laughs> when I was talking before about today was the offensive day in the postseason. First 12 games, 77 runs. Today alone, 54 so far and counting. Yeah, hitting shoes definitely on here at City Field. And Harvey misses again. 2 and 0. Ron, you got a seven run lead. It's 10 to 3. Yeah, well, you have to throw strikes. This is a, a, a manager's nightmare right here because you can't go too deep into this game. You know, Harvey doesn't have his good stuff. You've got a comfortable lead. Wins are what counts, not getting a pitcher through the fifth inning. Yeah, I've heard pitchers a lot, you know, just because they have a lead, sometimes they go out there and they aim for center of the, uh, the uh, plate, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 they're yeah. back in the game a little bit. They still have to pitch, but they do have that comfort of challenging hitters a little bit more, you know, those fastball counts. Andre Ethier waiting on deck. As Matt Harvey sets for a 3 1 pitch to Justin Turner. And the count full. You can just tell by the swings that the Dodgers are getting. They're in hitters' counts. They've got the full swing. The bullpen is up again for the Mets. I'll give Matt credit, though, at times when he needed to make a pitch, he's made it. There is Bartolo Colon who faced one hitter the other night. And that was the play that involved Chase Utley at second. Bell 
back and struck him out. This has been a battle for him, but he's battled through it somehow, some way. It doesn't hurt when your team scores your double foot double figures also. Yeah, when he gets two strikes, he knows what to do with yeah. it. And sometimes getting to that point. Here's Ethier. Through the 95 past him 0 1. He's done all his damage against right handed pitching this year. Ethier 14 home runs against right handers, none against lefties. Always a threat against the right handers. Gonzalez still at first after the one out single. Ethier in the air to right. Granderson on. He'll play it on the hop. And they were first and second with two down. Well, you see Dan Worthen on the left, Terry Collins on the right. They'll stay close until they somehow try to get this out here in the fifth. RV nearing the 100 pitch plateau. You heard Terry Collins tell Sam Ryan earlier 115 would be the, the max tonight. Well, if you're counting stressful pitches as two, he's at about a 140 right now. Crawford is singled and scored and struck out. He bats now with two on and two out. In the fifth. Ball and a strike. Winner of this game. Takes a 2-1 series lead in the best of five. Dodgers are going to throw Clayton Kershaw. In game four tomorrow here at City Field. Kind of off the fist, rounded to second. Murphy throws him out by a step. And Harvey gets out of it. Middle of the fifth. All Mets here in game three.
Let's take a look at tonight's Playmakers presented by Chrysler. How about this New York attack tonight? 10 for 22 with a couple of more home runs. Two doubles. Five for 10 with runners in scoring position. And here in the bottom half of the fifth, they lead it 10 3. We get a chance, we'll show you what Matt Harvey was doing in between innings. As Darno takes outside. Well, he came down. You can see Warthen and Collins saying, That's it. And he said, One more. I, I want one more. And the big fella won. I think he talked him into one more. Breaking pitch inside to Darno, who is two out of two, singled and scored in the second, and homered in the third. I guess there's no, uh, he's not saving any bullets for future starts. You'll have ample time in between. If he gets a chance, if they move on, he gets another start yeah. in the next round. In the air and out of play down the right side. The well, no question, though, is, uh, you know, refining his sharpness. Any value in one more inning out mm -hmm. there? Well, I think that's why he wants to. You know, he feels like he might have gotten a little better that inning. Up the middle, but Kendrick had him played perfectly, and that's one down. I've heard of talking across the picket fence before, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> that's Joel Peralta on the left, Bartolo Colon, Colon and Ansel Robles on the right with Ricky Bonus. And Ricky broke it up. He said, come on, get back to work. Cal, you a big fan of that? <laughs> I've never, never seen that in the course, much less of a postseason game. Talking across the fence or talking <laughs> to people on the bases. Fraternization is what uh, it's referred to. You're competing. Uh, at times you can be still friendly. This is Wilmer Flores with one down. Flores, of course, starting at shortstop. After the uh, injury to Tejada and the Chase Utley play the other night, Ruben Tejada was introduced as the starting lineups were introduced tonight. There's a line drive base hit to left. Flores will coast into second. Here was Ruben Tejada. As the players lined up on the baselines and after that broken leg, walking with the, uh, the aid of a cane. The applause were, were deafening, weren't they? Here's Juan Lagaris. Well, we talked about Matt Harvey coming yeah. back out, but Michael Kadire is in the on deck circle. Harvey's got a batting helmet on, though. Well, I guess what I meant by the big fella is always the manager is the biggest fella. <laughs> In the dirt, a ball and a strike. You wouldn't think that it would change because uh, the double. You know? No. That decision has to be made. Maybe he thought about it a little bit. I think Matt's trying to campaign a politic to stay in the game, but Collins seems to have made up his mind. And I think a good decision. It's been a stressful five innings for Matt. Lagaris to right center. PK Hernandez gloves this one for the second out. Sam Ryan, what's on your mind? 
Yeah, you're speaking about Ruben Tejada, that great reception he got before the game early. Well, more on the injury. Terry Collins said that broken right fibula, it was a clean break, so no surgery required. He'll be in a cast for about six to eight weeks. But he said he was feeling pretty down after the incident because he had worked so hard to get back to where he was. Keep in mind, he broke that same right leg two years ago, guys. Well, that is, that's the... Uh... That's the moment of the playoffs to this point that everybody's been talking about. 48 hours nonstop of uh, opinions from players and fans and broadcasters alike. It's unfortunate. There is contact that happens, and runners get hurt coming in, infielders get hurt coming in. You don't like to see anyone get hurt and be deprived of the chance to compete in this environment. He's playing so well. And it was courageous to try to turn the double play in the fashion he did. I don't think he had much of a chance. You know, turning it with uh, Kendrick running. In the back of his mind, he thought he could. So Michael Kadire. Pinch hitting for Matt Harvey here in the fifth. Flores, who doubled, leads from second. And that's going to stay down low. Two balls and a strike. Kadire started game one. You, know, you think 10 3 is a safe lead, right? Not in the postseason. You never feel that way. So I think that double did influence. The chance to score another run, the chance to drive him in. Then get to Dyer on the bat. I know he started game one. Your bench guys need uh, reps and at bats to stay sharp. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and here it comes. Kadire takes down low in the count full. There's Curtis Granderson, who's had himself a good night. Cleared the bases with a double off the wall in the second. That was so big after the Dodgers had jumped out with three runs of their own. In the top half, Kadire stays alive. Granderson, Cespedes, and Darno each have driven in three. You know, you, you pitchers talk about shutdown innings a lot. In the offense, it's not so easy to match a three or three spot on the board, but they came right back the offense mm -hmm. and put a four spot up. Huge in this ball game. Alex Wood was taking a lot of time and Kadire. I guess he had to step out and blink. Yeah. <laughs> Do that or he wanted to think about what pitch he's going to look for. Ball four. And Kadire walks. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear. Four driven. Crystal clear night here in New York. First postseason game for the Mets since 2006. And they are making the most of it. First one ever at City Field for that matter. When I think of Curtis Granderson, the front shoulder is such a key for him. To keep the front shoulder in. Keeps him in against lefties. Keeps him more compact. Keeps him powerful. He really accentuates the front shoulder, kind of reminding himself to keep that in. Granderson at the plate for the fourth time in five innings. Popped him up. Rollins calling, backpedaling, and catching the final out of the fifth. 
We'll be back here on TBS. That's with a big lead. The 2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T-Mobile. They're zipping right along here, top half of the sixth. Bartolo Colon on in relief of Matt Harvey, who went five. Colon won 14 games this year. He had never pitched in relief in the postseason. Until the other night when he faced Howie Kendrick. And it was a clone on the mound when you have the infamous slide by Utley. It's almost like he was a matchup righty against Kendrick. Kendrick didn't have good numbers off of him, but here tonight I think he's going to be asked to give a few more innings. It's almost a long man out of the pen here. Cologne is 42 years old. Signed by the Indians way back in 1993. Four years later, he would make his big league debut. You see his uh, Chevrolet pitch tracks arsenal as Grandal swings and misses. So he went to Montreal in the Cliff Lee trade. Straight to the White Sox. Angels signed him as a free agent. Red Sox did the same. White Sox did the same again. He just struck out Grandal for the first out. Well, he has that great comeback fastball. He won 29 games for this team the last two years, and many of the strikeouts coming on this fastball that comes back over the inside part of the plate. It really, really moves yeah. with extra spin because it comes off his, his the end of his fingertips. That strikeout interrupted my litany of the places he stopped. <laughs> Keep going. Yankees in 2011, <laughs> Oakland in 2010. 12 to 13, he played with the A's. Here he is with the New York Mets. By the way, he gave up 217 hits 
this year, which is the most in the National League while going 14 and 13. Well, to try to put it in perspective, we watched Noah Syndergaard the other night throw 100 miles an hour. He'd have to only lose eight miles off his pitch to do what Cologne can do now 20 years from now. Well, he just struck out T.K. Hernandez for the second out. And he is a fan favorite. Mr. Everyman, Mr. Cologne. The rare slider. We showed his pitch arsenal. What 42 year old throws 84% fastball? Remarkable. I think the last to do it was Abraham. <laughs> this guy's not just old school, he's Old Testament. And he <laughs> faces Yaciel Puig, who will pinch hit. And he had a huge cut. 0 and 1. Speaking of old school, I faced uh, Bartola in the in the 90s, in, end of the 90s in 2001, I believe. And he had a short, short arm delivery, and threw gas. Hard he to pick up. He right? didn't have that uh, movement that he has right now. So, as he's evolved, he's uh, he's learned, he's figured things out. He still throws the ball occasionally. 92, 93. We saw one at 92 a minute ago. He really learned how to move the ball. Got good control. Moves it in and out, up and down. The guy at the plate, plate, Yassiel Puig, has had his impact diminished by injuries this year. And here in this series, he's only appeared at the plate once and struck out. And Cologne deals a 2 2 to Puig. The 42 year old just struck out the side. We head to the bottom of the sixth at City Field.
Sports presented by Jaguar. In case you had to work today, couldn't catch all the action. Four game day in the postseason. Royals with seven runs in the last two innings to tie the series against the Astros. Set up a game five in Kansas City in a couple of days. Chris Colabello as the uh, Blue Jays did the same. They've rallied from two games down to tie the series. And Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo had been hitless in the postseason up until today. They go back to back. Bryant was 0 for 11. Rizzo was 0 for 10 heading into today's game. And they beat the Cardinals. Jake Arrieta gets the win. Cubs a win away from the National League Championship Series. Great numbers for Yimmy Garcia. He's seeing those 56 and two thirds innings, 68 strikeouts with only 10 walks. David White at the plate. And it takes a strike, one and one. Balls and a strike. New York Mets falling behind 3 0 in this game in the second. Scored four in the second. Two more in the third on a home run by Travis Darno. And they scored four in the fourth. The highlight was a long home run by Joanna Cespedes. We're told that ball has now sufficiently cooled as to be touched. <laughs> Brett Anderson started for the Dodgers with the first three Alex Wood pitch two and gives way to Garcia here in the sixth. And if you somehow didn't get the news on Chase Utley who was suspended by Major League Baseball on Sunday for two games but has appealed the appeal has not yet been heard and so with that being the case he is in uniform. He was. Uh, booed as you would expect during the player intros. He has not made an appearance in this game for Don Mattingly. Though Mattingly thought about it because he looked at the numbers. That Utley has in his career against Matt Harvey. Six for 18 with a home run. But he has not played here in game three. It's hard for me to understand the logic of the suspension. Because uh, there's been different examples, different plays recently at second base where the slide has been late. Uh, there is some contact there in defining what that sort of illegal slide is. Uh, it seems like it's within the rules. Now, if you want to change that next year, <laughs> then by all means, sit down and change it. But just like the Posey rule, right? Yeah. And I thought that uh, the catchers uh, over the years, it seemed like there were a lot of base runners that were just taking shots and hard. Uh, they were looking at them just trying for contact. I haven't seen that as much at second base. Uh, the contact is uh, is not quite the same. As a home plate, but if you think that's a problem, then address that. Well, you know, in the off season. And 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 to your point, Cal. I mean, sometimes, and I'm not, but sometimes when an injury that's serious results, that's when something's done. When Buster Posey uh, has what happened to him, that's when baseball looked at it and said, "Look, we have to do something about those home plate collisions." When you get a broken leg, uh, as you did in Game Two on Saturday night. I mean, if he bounces right back up and play continues right then, we're not having a lot of this discussion. No, you know, you, you, you won't think it's forgotten. It was a uh, enough of a collision home plate that you remember it. And who knows whether it's policed within the game or not. But yeah. I still I still think that contact was was caused when you're running down there looking to 
to make contact and pick a slide. You're making small micro decisions as you go down where he's going to go. He might stop and throw back. But when he started to make that turn, I think it put both the guys in a position where the collision, you know, Utley wasn't going to go down there and get hit in the head. He wasn't going to go do that. And by turning around, it just created a more violent collision. And so I think that's the real story, not the intent of Utley going in there to try to hurt anybody. I think he was going in there to break a double play up. Like everyone that should be in this position right here when they're on first base with the tying run at uh, at third base and you, you should be thinking I need, need to get a good jump so I can break up that double play so I can get my team a run. Uh, we're down one nothing at that point in the in the series uh, uh, one nothing games and down two to one in the seventh inning in game number two. And that's baseball to me. They off pitch to Murphy. All back, and we'll do it again. Well, I think because of the injury, though, that is that is a piece of videotape that's going to be washed over and over and over again by the people that make those decisions. Yeah, but, I, but I know what you're saying. That that's for the off season. Well, I know you can look at it and you can analyze it a hundred times and yeah. say the slide was late and it was hard, and then he did hit, he did hit a little bit on his uh, knee and stayed high. There's different techniques and ways to get in. Sometimes you get your feet just mixed, messed up where you try You don't know when to slide and you get in that wrong position. So I'm not advocating that it wasn't a late slide because I thought it was a little late. But it's within um, what the rules have been for a long, long time. Well, Cal, do you want to... Do you want or you said hey let's wait till the offseason if you're going to change it you want to change it you want to make the make a different rule around the bag a second. Um, I don't know what that would be so I'd be open to uh, some sort of conversation. I, I never thought that I, you needed protection at the bag. Now second baseman's my brother Billy I think probably has a different yeah. view on that. You're blind sometimes coming in. And you can't have a free reign just to go in there and make contact. I mean, we, we showed uh, Hal McRae coming in. That was at a different time and they made changes to that. So you couldn't roll block. And you couldn't uh, make that sort of move. They have made those changes. Whether they need to make any more changes. I mean, I'm open to the, to, to the conversation and kind of, it's kind of to understand that. But the guideline is when you're sliding, you need to slide um, and you need to be within second base. You just can't run all over the field. Here's Cespedes. He was one for seven in the first two games of the series. That one was a home run. And tonight, three for three. Knocked in three. Hit a ball into the second deck. With a swing just like that. So, you know, just because we just saw the shift, he's not going to try to punch a ball in right field. He's turning it loose. Power to all fields, and he really got that one. That's about four or five rows in that upper deck. Oh, wow. The second deck. He doesn't get cheated. That is for sure. Yeah, he didn't go up there to hit a single that time, did he? Back-to-back <laughs> <laughs> -back strikeouts for Garcia, who walked David Wright to start the inning. And here's Lucas Duda. I think everybody's susceptible to the 96, just to barely <laughs> up out of the strike zone. 0-2. Due to single in the second, and has struck out in the third and fourth. That's a bullet, but foul down the right side. Wow, it was a bullet. Can we put Statcast on a foul ball? <laughs> I think we have to get special permission, but we'll we'll do our best. <laughs> More like got, there, got there in a hurry, Iron Man. More like dispensation. <laughs>
David Wright who walked to open the inning with a lead at first. Murphy and Cespedes have struck out after that walk and that has Duda at the plate in a 10 3 game. A game the Dodgers once led 3 0. Kind of pitching we've seen in this series. Never expected 10 unanswered runs by the Nets. Mets to answer those three. How long can that hair get in the post? Zach Greinke, pitch game five if they get to it. Clayton Kershaw, he's got the ball tomorrow night. Kershaw took the loss in. Game one. Three walks his undoing in that seventh inning. Kershaw will be facing the rookie for the Mets who is 4 0 in six starts this summer. Steven Matz, a local kid. There's Steven. And Duda goes down swinging. Third time tonight. And the third strikeout in the inning for Jimmy Garcia. Head to the center. The upcoming schedule is brought to you by DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. Game four in this series tomorrow night here at City Field. And if we need a game five, it will be on Thursday night at Chavez Ravine here on TBS. Top of the order for the Dodgers in the seventh. Howie Kendrick leads it off against Bartolo Colon. On the ground wide of first, and that's a base hit for Kendrick. He's one out of four. In that top of the sixth, see this base hit first by Kendrick. 
so consistent his entire career being able to hit the ball from coast to coast all over the ballpark. He gets a, that one past Duda. I was just saying in the top of the sixth. Bartolo Colon, second oldest to strike out the side in the postseason. Dolph Luke was 43 for the New York Giants in the 1933 World Series. Remember that one, right, Aaron? Oh, it was awesome. There's Jimmy Rollins. He's over three. Getting the start at short tonight. So, so Cal, you've got this 21 year old phenom shortstop, Corey Seeger, who starts the first two games of the series. That's a comebacker to Cologne. There's one. There's two. We got this 21 year old phenom shortstop. Why is Corey Seager not in there tonight? Yeah, I was a little torn with that. I mean, I'm a big Jimmy Rollins fan, and in some ways, uh, he's getting to the end and making way for the new. But when you start the last uh, 30 games or so, and you're the shortstop, and you uh, you have a couple of games against guys that throwing 100 miles an hour, making really good pitches, you know, uh, I, was, I was kind of rooting for the kid, but also I was happy for Rollins, so I was torn. Um, I think I would have opted. You know, to stay with your your regular shortstop, like uh, how Donnie thought about uh, Howie Kendrick. You know, because he thought about he thought about starting Chase Utley. Yeah. Because he had numbers off Matt Harvey, yeah. and Rollins has some numbers off Harvey too, and Seager hasn't faced him. And they both have a lot of playoff experience. Balls hit the deep left center field, and Adrian Gonzalez has just homered. Here in the seventh. They've thrown the ball back onto the field and left, but Gonzalez circles the bases and has Homer here to cut the gap to 10 4. It's one of those running fastballs that uh, don't get quite to the outside corner. Agon still has really good power the opposite way. So Lagar is trying to flash some of that gold, but Gonzalez, when he gets hot, he's been hot against the Mets all season long. Even in this post, we were talking about first two games, six strikeouts, but two big hits. Two more hits in game three. Dodgers hit 187 home runs in the regular season, most in the National League, and that's their first of this series. Still down six here in the seventh. Well, Cologne, 42 years old, got that comebacker from Rollins and turned that double play before. That's smashed by Gonzalez. Nice play by Flores too. Throws a little up yeah. the line, he catches it in stride, stays in the bags, and turns it the rest of the double play with a pretty speedy Rollins running down the first. Here comes the two-two. Turner is two out of three. Has a run scored. This place was absolutely electrified before the first pitch tonight. Crowd of 44,276. The only bigger crowd they've had here at City Field was for the All Star game in 2013. Tap to right at third. That'll be easy. Bartolo Colon gives up the home run to Adrian Gonzalez. But the Mets still lead it by six as they stretch in New York.
welcome you back. Middle of the seventh. 10-4 game, and let's go inside the booth presented by eSurance, proud partner of Major League Baseball. Well, this huge crowd here at City Field, roaring before the game, very quiet in the top half of the second when the Dodgers get on the board, but it's been all Mets since then. What do you make of it, Iron Man? It's a beautiful stadium, number one. Great environment, loud, a little intimidating for the visiting uh, uh, team coming in. It's just a good environment for baseball. Well, I don't think you should lose your mind yet, though. At some point, you still got to get past Kershaw tomorrow and Greinke the next time on game five. So the Dodgers, tough game tonight, but they have their best pitchers going in four and five. Well, that pivotal game three that we talked about even before the, the series started, get Harvey matching up. It was a favorable matching up, even though he didn't throw as well as he can. Um, the Mets uh, appear to take going to be taking a two to one advantage in a best of five, which is which is a good advantage, a big advantage, and at home. Well, the Dodgers have two converted catchers who are pitchers in their bullpen: Kenley Jansen and Chris Hatcher. They got a converted infielder, Pedro Baez, is in now, who became a pitcher and throws close to 100 miles an hour. We saw him in game one when he faced David Wright. He gave up a two run single. The pitch arsenal presented by Chevrolet. And when you can throw it 100, 76% of those bad boys are going to be heaters. Here's Travis Darno. So when you think about the stat like that uh, percentage of different pitches I think of Mariano Rivera does he just have one pitch up there in one percentage so. well it, when he was in his prime it was just one pitch a little later he started throwing an occasional two, two seamer yeah I know about that yeah <laughs> <laughs> I hit his cutter off the wall one time and I'm thinking you're going to get another cutter out there and he broke my knuckles in half with a, with a two seamer that ran, it was really good too. <laughs> Just imagine you decided to use both of those at the same time. I think he did all right with the one pitch. Yes, he did. <laughs> and his his motion, he repeated it the same yeah. way every single time. In the highest pressure situations, or not, he was the same. I remember before he came up with that cutter, he'd had the same smooth sort of delivery, and the ball would just explode out of his hand. Darno's got three runs batted in on the night, two of those on a home run in the third inning. Dodger bullpen did not allow a run in the first two games of this series. Not been the case. Here in game three. Right up the middle by Darno. He's got his third hit of the night. Well, you start out a series 0 for 7. And this has been as he comes home to New York. A breakout game. Official caps, hoodies, jackets, and more. Celebrate with your favorite team at the MLB.com shop. Well, you mentioned it before, Ernie, just like Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant, maybe some home cooking was all they needed. Here's Wilmer Flores. Maybe this at bat will be long enough that we can crank out some of that video of the Wilmer Flores moment this year around the trade deadline. He must have heard me. He took the first pitch, 1 0. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know if you had that much power. Scott Cockrell, our producer, Matt Lip, our director. Tonight. Talking about the situation at the trade deadline. With Flores, who was 
signed as a non drafted free agent in 2007. Spent six years in the system before making his debut. And he, and I guess, Ronnie, the, the word was just getting around the ballpark a little yes. bit that he was going to be traded. And he, uh, he got very emotional. Turns out the deal fell through, and then two nights later against Washington, it's a walk-off homer. I remember watching that game that night and heard you say, different kind of tears, tears of joy on this one. <laughs> what, what, what happened on that night, which was very unusual, one, social media and its presence spread that throughout the ballpark. But the trade hadn't gone through. Most trades, when they're mentioned, the manager will take out the player, take him out of the game to protect him, make sure he doesn't get injured. Terry Collins did not hear the word of a trade that has been consummated, so he left Flores out there. So the fans got inning after inning to see his humanity out at shortstop. And I think for the fan, when you hear about arbitration and long term contracts, here's a kid who was 16 years old and he just didn't want to leave his original team. That means something to the fans. As it turns out, the, the Gomez deal never materialized. Mets had to look in another direction. Enter Yoannis Cespedes. And that's not before they looked at Justin Upton, Jay Bruce, and I guess settled on Cespedes. <laughs> I believe Dave Dombrowski's last move as a Tiger. Missed with the 3 1. And they're at first and second with nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh. Outing because Baez is an important part of that bullpen. He got a game tomorrow as Rick Honeycutt comes out to speak to him. But his last or last outing in the first game, he gave up that two run hit. So you're trying to get him a positive inning in case you need him in game four or game five. Haven't seen JP Howell in this series yet, but the left hander is loosening up in the Dodger bullpen. Honeycutt, the old Tennessee volunteer. Talking to Baez, and now the meeting breaks up. Well, that, that was to give uh, a little more time to the bullpen. I mean, waiting and waiting and waiting until the umpire comes out and says, okay, let's go. Sometimes the umpires are really quick to understand what is, what's happening. Yes. Sometimes they'll give you a little more time. You know that JP's out there, veteran lefty. Might need a few more pitches. Here's Lagaris. See Michael Conforto has a bat in the on deck circle for the Mets. You know, Wright's a bat off of Baez the other night. Um, the, the book is to get in on Wright a little bit, especially if you got a 100 mile an hour fastball. And he just threw the ball just a little bit inside and right didn't budge on it and all of a sudden he got ahead in the count and got a pitch out over the plate which he could drive for a big hit up the middle driving those two runs. Two on nobody out in the 10 4 game here in the bottom half of the seventh. And Lagaris takes a strike. I always love that expression when you pound them in. Okay, but if you pound them in and you're really disciplined on the inside part of the plate, then you find yourself 2 0. And now you can't yeah, pound them in. Yeah. Well, if you pitch in, you got to be able to prove you can pitch in for strikes. I think of the classic example of that is probably uh, Derek Jeter. 
you say, okay, he's vulnerable in. Okay, but you got to hit the inside corner to get a strike. If you throw it an inch off the inside corner, it's a ball. And what are you going to do now? You're 1-0, and what are you going to do now? You're 2-0, and it plays right into his approach and his uh, swing. Is that you, Ronnie, that was screaming? <laughs> no, that was uh, our stat man, Hal Galima. <laughs> It sounded like really high voiced Peyton Manning. <laughs> <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Lagaris led off the fourth with the double, came around to score. That's the inning. The Mets really broke it open. Don Mattingly's patience and good natured demeanor being tested here in game three of the NLDS. Sometimes it's difficult to pitch in a lopsided game one way or the other, especially if you're a short reliever. And it works on a little adrenaline. An hour. If you look at the box, of all where all the pitches are, they're all over the place. High, low, inside, out. Still got to be able to command that 99 or 100 mile an hour. Clayton Kershaw gets the ball on Tuesday night in Game Four, and unless there is a big comeback here by the Dodgers, that is a potential clincher. For the Mets, who have Stephen Matz on the mound tomorrow night. Well, a single and a couple of walks, and they're loaded with nobody out. Here's tonight's forecaster presented by FanDuel. That's pretty good ratio right there. 42% of your hits. Have come with runners in scoring position. Well, Don Mattingly going to make a double switch here in the bottom half of the seventh. We saw J.P. Howell. Loosening in the bullpen. There's the kid, Corey Seeger, 21 year old shortstop. Here comes JP. The winners into a bases loaded situation in a six run game. Mets on top.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Back here at City Field in New York, Game 3 of the NLDS. Being controlled by the New York Mets here at home. They lead at 10-4. J.P. Howell. Well, you see that 65 games is a specialty left. The only 44 innings in those. But look at that ERA. Best in baseball by relievers, 1.43. Made the double switch and Corey Seager who started the first couple of games at shortstop comes in to replace Justin Turner at third. Seager made four starts at third base. Most of his time was spent at short. And Michael Conforto. Bats with the bases loaded. Only 14 at bats this year against left handed pitching. As a, he's a platoon player now an everyday player soon. Howell quickly ahead 0 and 2. There's a lot of matchups for one and two hitters in that uh, 65 appearances. Yeah. He and Dallas Keuchel have the same barber. Mr. Howell and Keuchel. In the air to center field. Hernandez makes the catch. Darno will score. Throw to second late. They're at second and third. Let's tack another one on. It's 11 to 4. It's a nice at bat. Hit a ball deep enough. And I think it was deep enough. Where you wouldn't have a play at third either. And it's a little thing, and the game is uh, almost decided, but you can't let the runner tag up from first to go to second. The ball's got to go into second base. Once you realize it's too far, I don't blame Rollins in the cutoff position. That's where he's supposed to be, but once you realize the depth of the ball, point to second base. Throw the ball into second base, stop the, uh, keep the double play in order, and stop him from getting to second base. Those things matter in the one run games. Madden is on the top step. You can only assume that we're going to check and see if Darno left early from third. It wouldn't be the tag play at second. It looked like he beat that pretty easy. He, beat it, he beat it easy. It didn't look like he came off the bag either. It is interesting though that the Dodger dugout has a good view Boy. of the guy on third leaving. Can't leave any later than that. Maybe it's the guy at second base leaving early. Did Wilmer Flores leave early? Or was there a tag here when he came off the base? But his hands on the base stays on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you got to get the instant replay has conditioned everybody to hold the tag on him, hold the tag on him in case they come off just by a little bit. I don't see anything to you. I did not. They want Utley here in New York. See what these replay challenges cause, the havoc it causes. <laughs> See, that's the, uh, I think it's Flores on second base that they're challenging. I thought he might have left a little early. No matter what they decide here, the score is still going to be 11 to 4. And they're still going to want Utley. <laughs> I 
I'm not sure what they challenge though, but we know they're safe. <laughs> Nothing doing. So here's Curtis Granderson who. Well, every time I've looked up tonight, he's been at the plate. <laughs> Fifth at bat as we play here in the seventh. And way back in the second inning, I mean, don't forget when when the Dodgers jump out in this game, I mean, they punch Matt Harvey right in the mouth in the second inning. Four straight hits, scored three runs. And suddenly the Mets come to the plate in the bottom half of the second having to dig out of a hole and this guy was huge Curtis Granderson rifled the ball off the wall and right cleared the bases and we had ourselves a brand new ball game that's a little high and tight Interesting. This is a defensive alignment in a regular season game. You probably would not see. Infield in 11 to 4 game. All kinds of room on the left side for Granderson if he was able to shoot one through that way. He goes that way in the air. Deep left. Off the wall again. This is going to score two more runs. And it's a rout at City Field. I'm not sure what that pitch was. It looked like an off speed pitch on the outside. He stays on it and drives it off the middle of the wall with two more RBIs. You need help with the pitch on that one, Ronnie. <laughs> Is that his changeup or breaking ball? I think it was just a high breaking ball. Again, though, it just shows you what Granderson has done to reinvent himself as a hitter. Used to be a straight pull hitter when he played for the Yankees in that short porch. Goes the other way against the lefty. Five RBI night for Granderson. Chopper to third. Seeger throws out right for the second out. That's a breaking ball. You see the middle finger trying to get the spin, but the big dot. Never want the big dot. It's easy for the hitters to pick up. Used to have those old baseball cards that would have fence busters on them. <laughs> Curtis Granderson, two off the wall tonight. Five runs batted in, and the Mets. With a postseason franchise record 13 runs. Of the position players for the Mets in this game, only David Wright does not have a hit. But he has scored a run. This is Daniel Murphy. Grounded slowly to short. Rollins on the run. Throws him out. But three more runs on the board for the New York Mets.
Game four, Cardinals and Cubs. On TBS at 4.30 Tuesday, we'll be back at you here from City Field at 8 o'clock. And on Wednesday, a pair of Game 5s on FS1 in Toronto and in Kansas City. Well, some great uh, division series drama building. Blue Jays were in trouble. Royals were in trouble. Now both looking at Game 5 at their place. You know, lost in that... Game two after the Utley slide was at Addison Reed came in gave up an 0 2 double to Adrian Gonzalez and then another double to Justin Turner which broke open that game. He needs a good inning. There's a strike to Andre Ethier. He's two out of three. Singled in the second and scored one of those three Dodger runs when they got off to the quick start against Matt Harvey. But it didn't last. Ball and a strike. Avalon loosening in the Dodger pin. Three balls and a strike. Well, with this 13 4 score, the largest deficit overcome to win a post game is eight runs in the 1929 World Se Series in game four. The Cubs of all teams led 8 0 in the bottom of the seventh. The A's scored 10 and 7 to win 10 to 8 86 years ago. Today. Here it's 13 to 4. That ball's hit right on the button by Ethier to center, but Lagares tracks it down for the first out. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. So tell me a little bit about Steven Matz, Ronnie. Oh, had a start against the Dodgers, his third start. And after that is when he had the problem in his back. It was mostly under his armpit. So he had to take some time off, go on the disabled list. He was 3-0 and at that time. Won another start when he came back off the DL. I know this might be shocking to both of you, but he's a hard-throwing young pitcher for the Mets. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> What a novel concept. <laughs> Throws 96 or above. Good change up that he learned from the, the great Frank Viola down in Triple A. And was a breaking good, ball. That was a good change up. <laughs> that made him a winner. He was uh, roughly a 500 pitcher, Frankie V, at that point. And that change up, I'm trying to think who taught it to him. Johnny Padres. Ah, there you go. Just 24 years old, and as you point out, the local ties and boy that's a that's that's a big stage with bright lights tomorrow yeah. night. And you're matched up against that guy Clayton Kershaw. It's not that the Mets have a lot of hard throwing starting pitchers it's just that very unusual for an organization to have so many. Look at that thing. Right off the fist. Like he hit it with a rolled up Sports <laughs> Illustrated. That it took, been, took that, forever to get to read. That had been left in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> he hits this way down on the handle. It's almost amazing they got the bat to it. Oh, knocked a one hand right off the bat. Next year, Zach Wheeler will be back after Tommy John surgery, and 
around the All Star break, maybe August 1st, you'll envision a starting rotation for the Mets of Harvey, Wheeler, DeGrom, Syndergaard, and Mats. But still with this big lead, looming is Kershaw and Greinke. Kershaw on three days rest, Greinke on proper rest. And if you're wondering, we did talk to Terry Collins today and brought up. Think about the Grom at all on short rest. Not really. That's such valuable arms that you want it all, but you got to take care of it all too. Well, that story's been told in this city. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. One and two to Grandal. Addison Reed strikes him out. Eleven Dodgers have gone down swinging the night. The 2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T-Mobile. PA system blasting the Billy Joel here at City Field. And they're all feeling all right here tonight. As the Mets enjoy a 13 to 4 lead. Over the Dodgers. Here's Monty Grandal. See the grimace as he made that last swing. And at the end of the eighth inning, gonna stay in there. And Joanna Cespedes will lead it off against Luis Avalon, the sixth Dodger pitcher. Well, Luis Avilan did a nice job scoreless and 
six of the 17 of the 23 games that he came in the, as a Dodger. Look out over there. It's almost not safe in the stands when Cespedes is up. If you're just joining us in the fourth inning, Cespedes absolutely crushed a home run into the second deck. He and Travis Darno have home runs for the Mets here in game three. I mean, not many players generate more bat speed than Cespedes, huh, Cal? And a lot of torque in every pitch, too. You don't see him cutting down and punching the ball anywhere. <laughs> You know, it was his hustle in inning two after the Dodgers had scored three, beat out an infield hit on one hopper to Jimmy Rollins that started that big inning. Look out again. Fortunate that a good number of fans maybe have to work tomorrow and he. Have departed City Field. A few more empty seats in there. The one two rounded to Rollins has to hurry and he gets him by a half a step. I think he got him by a quarter of a step. <laughs> We need the stab cast to find out how fast he got down to first base. All right, Yale, what was it, a quarter of a step or a half a step? It was a quarter of a step, but even more importantly, even if it's close, I don't think in a game like this you challenge that play. You've got the lead. No Good reason point. to. So what if Cespedes, Cespedes comes to you and said, look, I really want that hit. <laughs> Hang with him. You've had a good enough night. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Jimmy Rollins might think about playing him a little shallower because <laughs> he got down the line really fast there and, and uh, Rollins came in charge it got rid of it quickly too. also running like that in a 13 to 4 game. That's fast from the right side. On a night that's had all kinds of offense from the New York side Lucas Duda. Has struggled a bit. He did single his first time, but then has struck out in his next three appearances. Used to always have this phrase, didn't they, Cal? If you had a big offensive day, all the guys would tell each other, whatever you had for lunch today, Do it have again. it tomorrow. Try to duplicate your whole routine, whatever that may be. Did you do that a lot? Um, that was the only thing I was a little superstitious about. I tried to. Make the day go the same way I did the day before. Eat at the same place. Eat the same food. I'm here to inform you that that doesn't always work. <laughs> it worked, it worked for Wade Boggs. That was a that was chicken, right? That ball almost got Cespedes. No worries, Superman tonight. <laughs> Get to the protection. Behind the screen. And for the fourth time in this game, strikeout for Lucas Duda. Twenty one miles an hour. Oh, that's getting it. Not only the little guys can run 21 miles an hour. That's getting it when you lead 13 to 4. It's impressive. Here's Travis Darno. Well, 
if you're Clayton Kershaw of the Dodgers and you're looking for your signature postseason moment, well, it's coming in 24 hours, less than that. See his numbers from the first game. And elimination starts, he's 0 2 with a 9 ERA. All of that can be erased by a big start tomorrow. On the other side of that coin, if you are the New York Mets cow, um, and you look at this and say, hey, look, um, we got him out of the game in game one. He walked a few guys. We took advantage. We won the game. What does that do confidence wise heading into game four? Well, tomorrow? You're, ho you're hopeful. You're at uh, home. You have a lead. You should be playing uh, a little more relaxed. But again, the whole philosophy of making him come to the middle of the plate. Don't try to chase. Get the pitch count up if you can. Um, and then maybe turn it over to the bullpen. I thought Kershaw was close to being uh, the great Kershaw in that uh, first game. Then ran into a little control problem in that one inning. Yeah, three walks in the seventh. I, I think the problem that for folks out there, when Kershaw, if he has one of those signature moments, he dictates the at bats. He can get to a point where you don't have a chance. He's done it before. Just has not had that game in October. Yeah, he's done it most of the time. Yeah. If you look at it, he's, he's almost robotic in getting into the eighth inning. Not too many hits, not too many runs. And your team has a good chance to win. Just hasn't hasn't gone to the playoffs. Strike three to Darno. We are at the end of eight. Mets 13, Dodgers 4. Stay tuned after the game for the postseason show on TBS presented by the Lincoln Motor Company. Casey Stern at the controls there in Atlanta. Gary Sheffield and Dusty Baker. 
and Pedro Martinez. They have got you covered with all the action. That'll be a busy show. Got four games to talk about. I always enjoy watching the fellas. Did I ever tell you that I got mad at Dusty Baker for coming down and trying to take me out at second base? You did. No, do and go ahead. Now would be the time to tell it. I'll tell you that right now. Top of the ninth. <laughs> so he comes down running at second base and never slides, stands straight up, got his hands up in the air. I got to stand over top of him to throw the ball to complete the double play. And when he comes in, I go, what was that? And uh, he looks at me, he said, he said, uh, um, I usually slide on this knee over here, but I had surgery on that knee and I can't slide on the other one. <laughs> 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 I thought that was a plausible explanation. TK Hernandez leads off the ninth off Eric Goodell. Eric Goodell, who this season spent some time on the disabled list, the UCLA Bruin, with some elbow issues, getting in a postseason appearance. Made 35 relief appearances, 33 and a third innings, and didn't allow a run in his first 14 appearances. Corey Seeger well hit into right field. That's a base hit. Hernandez will wind up at third. They're at the corners with nobody out. We can accomplish some things in a, in a blowout game. Corey gets his uh, first hit. Take something into. He's got a second hit. Take a second hit. He right? had he had one the other night. It was the ball oh, that uh, Michael Kadire had a lot of trouble with right along the line, turned into a ground rule double. All right. So we we got a second hit in the blowout <laughs> game. <laughs> Take it anytime. Got a second hit after a few outs. That was a weird hit down the third baseline. Well, moving forward for the Dodgers tomorrow. Good news, bad news. The good news is right after the All Star break at City Field, Clayton Kershaw threw a shutout. 11 strikeouts ran right through the lineup of the New York Mets. Bad news is that's before Cespedes and some of the other players arrived. That was a different lineup. Yes, it was. But you always like good memories in a ballpark if you've had a big game, a good game. Two balls, one strike. Eric Goodell to Howie Kendrick. And the count even. That is true. Pitchers uh, pitch really well in some ballparks because the feel of the mound. Yeah. You'd think you'd have a little more control over that at home. Doctor the mound up the way that you like it, but sometimes it just fits. A little bigger ballpark, too. You get away with occasional mistake. So Cal, take me inside that Dodger clubhouse when this game's over. Is it easy just to brush off of, uh, you know, you, you get pasted like this in game three and you got Kershaw going the next day. Easier than trying to shake off a 2-1 loss in a in a game? Yeah, I think it would be, uh, it's, it's much e easier. You've kind of lost sight of this game a little while ago you try to do some things to uh, to write yourself if it's offensively or maybe you get a pitcher going in there so yeah the game's over in, in many ways so it's not nearly as emotional not nearly as draining you just it's easier to turn the page in the air near the line in right and out of play it's interesting because because fans feel worse when your team gets blown out yeah. and the players actually say okay it's a loss. That's a loss that was decided a long time ago, and you know, 
know, why worry about it? There's not any more embarrassing to lose a game big than lose a game three to two. The only thing that hurts is that you did get up three nothing with uh, three runs in the second. I mean, that's a long time ago, but you go to said, boy, that's, that was huge. The way the pitching has been in this series, but not tonight. Well hit by Kendrick to left. Cespedes is going to have to play this ball. That's it's out of here though, but they may have to check this and see if a fan reached over. Well Allen ported the left field umpire though signal with his hand that it's a home run. So maybe they'll have to review it. <laughs> if it stands it's 13 to 7 with nobody out here in the ninth. Split finger by Eric Cadell there just hung up in the inside part of the zone. Ooh, that looks familiar. <laughs> looks like it's out of there though, right? Tough, tough yeah, call. Yeah, Where, tough here's one. the angle here. I mean it could have landed right on that orange. You don't know whether it would when it went over for a home run or came back and play. They're going to check with New York on this one. A line drive. I don't think it was a sinking line drive, but it clearly reaches out. Boy, that's that cam camera angle that we have right along the fence. That one looked more like it wasn't going to go out, that he had his hand all the way over the fence, but it's a tough one. Fans who are left here. And the players on the field, everybody looking up at the big board. I mean, from that angle, it looked like he caught it in the glove, maybe a foot over the fence. Here's another one. Here's that line. This is the one that looks like it stayed in. But is the glove below the fence? Yeah. Well, they've ruled it a home run. It doesn't matter anyway. So for Howie Kendrick, a three-run homer here in the ninth makes it a 13-7 game. So we talked about some of the positives in a game like this. Howie feels pretty good about himself now. Swung the bat pretty good tonight. Ends with a home run. Not that it carries over tomorrow, but. Well, Dan Wortham went out and had a word. With Eric Goodell trying to record his first out of the ninth inning. He's like, Eric, uh, do you realize what the score is? Tough, though. First postseason for Eric. Tough way to start it. Jimmy Rollins slaps one to left. <laughs> First time we've heard booze here tonight, except when Chase Huntley was introduced. I guess you'd want to try to avoid using your closer. In a game like this, huh? Well, especially if you could use them in multiple innings tomorrow. But after a day off, I guess Collins take, not taking any chances. Familia gets the call in a six run game. Nobody out here in the ninth. Dodgers with a runner on.
The 2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T-Mobile. Well, it was a 13 to 4 game going to the top half of the ninth inning here in New York. But there has not been a Dodger retired at this point. The three run homer by Howie Kendrick has cut the deficit to 13 7. I've Jimmy heard. Rollins singled, and now here's Adrian Gonzalez against Familia. I've heard of not taking any chances, but this is crazy. You know, the, the one thing, uh, not to be funny about this, is that. You bring in Familia because you don't want to take any chances because you want that 2 1 lead. But this allows Gonzalez to see him again. This allows their good hitters to see him. Takes the first pitch over for a strike. Gonzalez homered in the seventh. You know, seeing a guy, if you don't have it, bats off of him. Yeah. And that's uh, helpful, but if you have a pretty good history of understanding it, it is a matter of stuff. I'm trying to think it wasn't an advantage for me to see Mariana. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There was the Gonzalez home run stroke in the seventh. He uses the entire ballpark, always has, and went the opposite way there. Gonzalez swung on and missed. Gonzalez think that ball hit the ground. But, but he's saying that he's he foul tipped, tipped it. it. Yeah. And if he foul tipped it and hit the ground. It's a hard one to tell. Darno's glove. He might have just caught it in the edge of the pocket. And here's Justin Ruggiano to pinch hit. One down now in the ninth. Familiar when you watch him pitch and he's on everything's down slider really hard sinking fastball and split finger no balls and two strikes Ruggiano played 36 games for Seattle after being traded by the Cubs for the season and then 21 games with the Dodgers hitting nearly 300 and pretty good off the bench in pinch hitting situations like this one and Mattingly put him on the roster. Originally the Dodgers drafted him in 04 he was traded to Tampa Bay a couple of years after that. In the air behind third, right over, calling, two down. Well, there hasn't been much drama after the fourth inning of this game when the New York Mets erupted for four more runs. And had that 10 3 lead. They tacked on three more in the seventh. And now trying to put the finishing touches on a 13 to 7 win here in game three.
Heathier takes a strike. 61 runs scored in playoff games today as teams get a little deeper into the rotations. There were 11 runs scored in the first two games of this series. 20 tonight. tonight an NLDS record. Ninety seven mile an hour high fastball. And the pitch before that a ninety three diving split. Right back to him. The New York Mets are a win away from going to the National League Championship Series, and they'll try to get it done at home tomorrow night. Joanna Cespedes with a blast on this night. Curtis Granderson, five runs batted in. And the Mets put it away 13 to 7 in game three. Neither starter certainly on top of their game. Harvey with the win with five innings of work. But it really was the answer in the second inning. After the Dodgers scored three runs off Harvey, the Mets came back and had four. And after that scored 10 unanswered. I mean, you think of Cespedes and you think about him hitting the long balls and hitting the opposite field home runs. But a leg out infield uh, single um, started uh, started the rally and then Granderson hit the ball off the wall. He's been big. Now Sam Ryan's down there on the field with Curtis Granderson. Sam. That's right, guys. And Curtis, you knew the atmosphere would be electric here tonight, especially after the emotions from Saturday, what was it like to have the bats really wake up in this one? Oh, it's fun. You know, you never know when they're going to come to life, especially when you got a great pitching staff like you do in the Dodgers rotation, including the bullpen. But you just try to stay with your stuff, try to do the little things, continue to put pressure, and hopefully the bats will come alive. For you, five RBIs. That ties a franchise record here for postseason game for the Mets. In the second inning, this is a team that fell behind 3 nothing. You kept that inning going with the three-run double. Take me through that. Well, unfortunately, you know, the error early on added to the three runs that they were able to get across on Harvey in the top part of the second inning. But then our lineup came in, you know, not getting the heads down, continue to get runners on base. Not only can get RBIs if the guys happen to get on base. So the guys did an amazing job ahead of me just trying to find different ways, base hits, walks, and so on. As the game went on, guys just continued to pass the bat to the next guy up to let somebody come up and do it big throughout the course of the game. You don't even want to take credit for that. Five runs batted in, so it comes down to one. It could be one game tomorrow. This, this could be it here at City Field at home, what would it be like to do it in front of these fans? Uh, it would be great, but we definitely can't jump ahead of ourselves. We gotta, we know that they're going to come out not looking to give it to us. we got to continue to fight. It's going to be another tough matchup against another great team out there and another great guy handling the ball. So definitely, definitely over with by any means. Thanks a lot, Curtis. No problem. Thank you. Back to you guys. 13 runs, 13 hits for the New York Mets as they win it 13-7. to Back to wrap things up here from City Field right after this.